What's cracking, everybody? So, I'm making this video. Um, actually, uh, I'm making it for, in conjunction with, uh, Jack Luck 4. You all know her. And um, she was busy um, tonight. And uh, like she mentioned in one of her previous videos, um, she does have four kids and she's busy with a lot of stuff. So um, <clears throat> the one good thing is I'll be busy too soon. So that's something to look forward to. But I've got a couple of things I wanted to talk about here. I wanted to give a shout out and talk about a couple of issues. And I'm going to try to be as brief as possible, but give you as much information as possible. I want to start out with a uh, <clears throat> um, with some information regarding a little bit of breaking news. Um, I found this website, and this was through another YouTuber. I've watched a couple of different videos, and I've se and I've seen this I've seen this before, um, but I grabbed it, and it's I'm going to put the link. In the bar, but it's basically called IntelliCast, uh, interactive weather map. Now, if you go to IntelliCast.com, which you can do that right now if you'd like, uh, it pulls up a map. Now, you'll see little blue squares and icons that have different things rain, snow, clouds. Go all the way to the end, right, right before, right to the left of the little purple L in a box, it looks like and you'll see a little seismic type box and that's earthquakes click on earthquakes now if you click on earthquakes this shows you every earthquake that's been reported by the uh USGS okay and that's this is as up to date as you can get um is my understanding so now if everybody would like to <clears throat> um we can look at the United States because everybody's but there's there's a lot of hype and there's a lot of panic and fear mongering and a lot of other stuff going on and information that's may or may not be true and it's just insane and and, and I'm not one of those type of people the sky I, I never talk about how the sky is falling I'm not an alarmist everyone who knows me knows this um, but I found this information very interesting especially in light of recent events uh, the IntelliCast.com, if you, if, you, if you scroll to California and put, put California right about, and then you can see it because it's, <laughs> it's covered in earthquakes. Um, and uh, if, you, if you center California, on the left-hand side, there is a, um, by the way, you have to click really quickly after you scroll across. You can left-click and hold down the mouse and scroll the map, and then you have to click again to keep that map frozen or it'll scroll again. On the left hand side there's a little um, zoom in zoom out. If you zoom in you can drill all the way down to the major cities. The reason I'm doing this is because uh, on the, in the news today was a newscast from California that a 40 foot section of route US 1 um, fell into the ocean today. So if you go up to where Santa Cruz is, just south of San Francisco, um, just south of that is Salinas. The section of Route 1 that fell is just at the bottom tip of this little inlet south of Santa Cruz, west of Salinas. Now if you look on the map, if you've drilled down far enough, which is the one, two, three, four, five, sixth line down on the little zoom thing. You'll see, and you just and just put your cursor over it. You don't even have to click. You'll see five earthquakes, <clears throat> all measured today, ranging from 1.5 to 3.3 magnitude. Yes. So there's a lot of quakes, and and there's more north, south. They're all over California. You see, you'll see them because you're when you're scrolled out. Now. It's it's reasonable to um, postulate that many of these earthquakes and earthquakes all over the area, and we're talking about fault lines here, people. We're not talking about an earthquake that shakes it just right in one area and then something drops in the ocean. Um, it's very possible that these that all of this earthquake activity is contributing to this 
So it's very interesting. Um, and uh, it can it can seem like it might be a little scary. Everybody will get there. The hackles on the neck will stand up. Some might not. Some might. Uh, might. But um, I thought that was extremely, extremely interesting. I'm going to link uh, in telecast.com. I'm going to link the video um, footage. Uh, you can you can uh, find it if you just uh, search for it on YouTube right now. Um, Forty foot section of US one fell into the ocean, um, so it's going to be closed for quite some time. Um, another, <clears throat> and now I want to switch gears because that was the first issue I wanted to talk about. And you guys can mess around with that in Telecast. It's a very cool site. Um, the second, and, and in my mind, a little more probably. Um, just as important issue, if not more, is I want to shed some light on some things we're finding out about Fukushima and the radiation and things like that. And I know there's been a lot of, again, hype and fear mongering about radiations already in California where the people are taping up their window. You know, it's, it's just not about that right now. That's not what I'm doing. I wanted to point you out. I'm giving a shout out. Now, I found this uh, user through JackLuck4. <laughs> And uh, we've watched a few of his videos, and um, his name is Leak Spinner. Um, Leak is in leaky fuel spinner. Okay, <clears throat> Leak Spinner is a, uh, I believe he's Scottish, and uh, this user has done an immense amount of videos posting up stuff about Fukushima. He did a lot of stuff on Libya and the Middle East, and now he's, I mean, he's just been Fukushima crazy. Which is a good thing, and I'll tell you why. This is the reason Luke, Leak Spinner has been doing a lot of this stuff about um, Fukushima. So I want you guys to listen closely. The reason why I'm covering this thing in Fukushima Daiichi is because I have a little bit of understanding about what's going on there. I worked for British. I worked at a British nuclear fuels facility in the UK that produced nuclear fuel rods for advanced gas cool reactors and for Magnox reactors. I have a little bit of understanding about radiation and stuff like that because I had to do certain training, training courses and stuff like that whilst I, whilst I was there to make me aware of, of the dangers and the levels, uh, the, safe, the, the, the safe and the dangerous levels of radiation exposure. I have a little bit of understanding about what's actually happening over there. And this is the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm spending some time um, doing this. I'm going to link his channel. I would highly recommend you go subscribe to him. Um, uh, smart guy and uh, has, has some understanding and has really just been on top of Fukushima and all of the latest information. Um, and a couple of links, a couple of things that I wanted to mention. Uh, <clears throat> Obama had come out and he had mentioned this because uh, a lot of people are curious as to why he mentions this 50 mile radial area. Um, and there's a reason. Leak Spinner mentions this particular report that I'm about to show you. Uh, luckily, uh, as amazing and, and wonderful as Heather is, and, and the queen, of the research queen, as I call her, um, she found this report and she sent it to me. And basically, this report is um, Safety and Regulatory Assessment of Generic BWR and PWR Permanently Shut Down Nuclear Power Plants. So it kind of gives you an idea of what, you know, safety regulations and things like that that they look for that you need to adhere to. Now in this report, there's you can scroll down, I'm going to leave this link, about more than halfway down the page, um, or down scrolling down, there's a look for A5. Uh, the last numbered section is 7, and then it goes to A. So look for A5, and again, we have the Heather to thank for this. I love you, baby. Results for various releases corresponding to postulated spent fuel pool accidents with total loss of pool water. This is what we're talking about. The, the water that's evaporating and boiling out. Uh, 1A, case description, total inventory 30 days after discharge 50 mile radial zone. 
Total inventory, 90 days after discharge, 50 mile radial zone. You can read it. Basically, that's why this was mentioned. And what I'm trying to get at is, it's obvious, based on their actions or lack thereof, that the Japanese government was not adhering to this, is not, is, is not following this. So that page A5 is an interesting little page. And just, Reese, and just now, within the last hour, um, TEPCO has come out, a spokesperson from TEPCO has come out and said that the radiation levels are the highest that they've been. The highest registered so far. Now, according to previous reports, it's my understanding that they were reading somewhere between 3 and 4 uh, millisieverts. Now it's up to 20. So this was not too long ago that they were reporting 3 to 4 millisieverts. Now they're registering 20 millisieverts okay, per hour uh, near where the workers were trying to reestablish electrical power. So that's a huge jump. And that's major. And the last quick thing I wanted to show you was a, uh, a report that came in, and I will link it. It's the TEPCO Reactor by Reactor Status Report at Fukushima. Status of nuclear power plants in Fukushima as of 10, 10 o'clock, March 18th. Um, so this is an absolutely up-to-date report. Um, core cooling requirement AC power. Core cooling not requiring. Uh, building integrity. One, severely damaged. Three, severely damaged. Four, severely damaged. Two, slightly damaged. Not functional. Uh, cooling requiring AC. Core and fuel integrity. One, two, and three, damaged. Four, no fuel rods. Um, it's just crazy. So you can see the updated report. Um, so there's some very, uh, there's, there's a lot of development here, and it's getting worse. That's obvious. So we have to wait and see, see some more developments. Um, please go visit Leak Spinner's channel, sub to him, um, check out some of his stuff, and check out that IntelliCast. And keep, you know, we have to keep an eye on this earthquake activity. I mean, we're talking an 8.9 on the Richter scale. And people were wondering, they were trying to make connections to why the earthquakes, while multiple earthquakes were happening in multiple countries at once on the same day. That doesn't surprise me. When you have uh, huge fault lines under the seabed, especially that ring of fire there, and we're talking about, you know, plate plate tectonics, all this kind of stuff. I mean, it just, it, it's it's not surprising. And then to see this large section of Route 1 just fall into the, fall into the ocean. People driving over it earlier in the day said they thought it had a depression. It felt like it was depressed or dipped. But anyway, this is a lot of stuff to keep an eye on. There's a lot of quake activity in California. There's been some quake activity in Canada, in Arkansas, in um, various places all over the world. Um, and in, as a matter of fact, there's a uh, nuclear plant up in Canada and Ontario that just leaked 73,000 liters of demineralized water, heavy water, into Lake Ontario. Um, it, was a, it was a pump seal malfunction. Those things are not supposed to malfunction. And it's according to their history and, and, and I guess their um, reliability, they don't malfunction. So this was a, a, a fluke of some kind, I guess. But West of there, they had uh, a couple of good-sized quakes, a 3.7 and a 4.3. So just be diligent, um, be conscientious, and uh, if you've got any information, bring it forward. All right, everybody, that's it for me for now. Peace.